not breaking the barrier between public health and the rest of the health system and understanding that it's all part of the same thing, not doing that will make our health systems unsustainable by 2050, 2060, which actually means that universal health care coverage that we have in many countries today in Europe will not be a reality. It will simply and utterly be impossible to continue to provide everything for everyone. When you look at outcomes of disease, mortality, also the morbidity, uh, the number of hospitalizations, for instance, uh, you can really uh, see the effect of a public health intervention. Now in the, in the States, for instance, the increase in life expectancy is about 30 years and two-thirds of it come out of uh, public health measures and initiatives. So the major advancement we have made with regard to our life expectancy comes from public health uh, measures. Europe is spending 97% of budgets reacting to disease, and many times reacting to diseases that would be avoidable if we were effective in preventing them or promoting health. And this is shocking that we are only spending 3% in what could actually release more resources so that we could treat those that inevitably will get sick no matter what we do. We have to consider healthcare not as a cost but as an investment because every economists have calculated that every euro you invest in healthcare will give a return on investment of three euros in rich countries and up to nine euros in poor countries. The truth is, public health is not incentivized in any way. Healthcare managers at a hospital level or at a clinic level are paid more and more to do more surgeries, more hospital visits. They're not paid based on getting their patients healthier, and they're certainly not paid to get the community healthier, or else they would be incentivized actually to work with schools to get better education and better health education. They'd work with municipalities to get more cycle lanes for bicycles, for example. We need to focus on outcomes, on health outcomes, and that our funding and financing system of health systems have to refocus so that we can look at community health as a whole. You used the word personalized medicine. It's the most abused word nowadays because personalized medicine in its reductionist definition is about looking at the genomics and the proteomics and so on. And we all know that that is important. Think about pharmacogenomics. But we also know that is only part of the complexity that we are dealing with. Ten years ago in Scotland there was a really public smoking ban. And at that time when they followed the amount of children coming into the hospital with an asthma attack, after the smoking ban it decreased by 20%, so a huge effect on epidemic of asthma just by taking uh, public health measures. If we go down to the local level, for example, um, we can actually see the implementation of vaccination uh, among elderly when it comes to the flu season. That truly really has impact when it comes to, to the long-term uh, public health. Or we can have access to health data related to population, geo-reference to the neighborhood level. Nowadays, I can look and see which neighborhoods have more families going to food banks, which is a great indicator of possible infant malnutrition, and I can actually have a public intervention there. And so using data in the right way, and if possible, georeferencing it to the neighborhood level, I can not only intervene where that intervention is mostly needed, but I can actually monitor the impact in the long run. The pyramid is uh, it's the pyramid of public health and it's a graphic representation of what can be achieved. And for instance, the basis of the pyramid, which is of course broad, uh, there you have socio-economic factors. They are so important. You have different areas where you have uh, poor areas where people have not access to all the health care, are living in not very good conditions. So even here in our European cities, it's really a fact of life. The thing is that health is still perceived as a social issue. Health is a development issue. And now that we are working on the Sustainable Development Goals, number three 
is on health, but actually, if we work on all 17, we'll have a healthier society at the end. But the other way around also plays out. If we have a healthier society, we'll reach the 17 sustainable development goals by 2030 much quicker. By building healthy societies, health promotion, healthy environment. In this city, actually, we are switching from a center of the city that's full of cars to a center of the city that will be full of pedestrians and cycling people. Politically, that's not easy. People want to be able with their car to drive and just to the center of the city. But that's preparing the next generation. We are now building our future health. So there was a program set up in Finland in the 90s by the government together with pulmonologists and implementing education and counseling. Uh, of course, not only for the physicians, but also for the nurses and the allied healthcare professionals to really educate patients about the importance of having preventive treatment, so daily treatment to prevent inflammation in their uh, patients. And in that way, it was really shown by following up the population that the amount of asthma disease, hospitalization, also absence from work, for instance, decreased. So a really nice outcome. And also the mortality due to asthma went down. But what certainly this project did, it changed society in the way they look at how can we, from an action, from the very beginning of the life cycle, can we detect timely, can we treat appropriately, and can we make sure that as much as possible all this is conceived and put into practice in the framework of the local community. Having uh, the GPs in the public health initiative is uh, crucial, for instance, with regard to education and counselling of asthma patients. Other examples for GPs are how important they are in delivering the vaccinations, for instance, for influenza patients. So they are very close to the daily life of our patients and they can intervene at the right moment with public health initiatives. Transforming health systems to make them sustainable in the long run depends on a top-down and a bottom-up approach. We have to go both ways. This meaning that we have to get in patients engaged, we have to have healthcare professionals engaged, we need to get those managers and economists engaged, and we need to get politicians, policymakers and governmental officials engaged. You need everyone. Of course, political leadership has a huge advantage, which sometimes helps push that cultural transformation from the top down. But what we have seen is that politicians are too slow in pushing that in the right direction. So we actually, I actually believe that healthcare professionals can play the active role of pushing the agenda bottom up, getting those patients on board, getting the managers on board, and explaining these concepts and actually showing real world results of how this works, starting in their hospital or within their network of hospitals, showing, listen to their Minister of Health, this works, we have to do it full stream everywhere. I think the role of the society, like European Respiratory Society, is key. And the fact that the organization really feels what is needed in society and it brings the expertise, the specialist expertise, together with the political expertise, with the uh, public health expertise, to think together in, about how to address. And I think that a modern professional society like ERS has to work in that perspective. The future is looking bright, provided we are able to make a project that can create enthusiasm in the population, in the providers, different providers, and supported by governments. To find that today, I think, is vital for the future generation. My dream would be for public health to be part of the global health system approach, that actually we would be looking at making people healthier as our primary goal. Everything else would be a direct consequence from this. I believe that we now have the knowledge and the tools to do so. We just need that political and management will to push the agenda forward. I would like to see that uh, the, the policy makers are uh, not only uh, working on the short term because they want to be re-elected after three or four years, but public health initiatives is something that you are doing also for the long term. So they need to have the long term perspective and see how important it is to think along the preventive uh, way.
for things that will happen in our young people within 20, 30, 40 years, you have to take measures now. And we have a scientist to convince the policymakers that they have to do it. So we can help in delivering the science, but they should do the interventions.